A group of friends who fall victim to a family of cannibals depicts the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which is a landmark horror film released in 1974, directed by Toe Cooper. The film's plot is loosely based on the real-life crimes of a notorious murderer, Ed Gein, who inspired several horror films including Psycho and Silence of the Lambs. However, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre takes a more dreadful and brutal approach, with a relentless onslaught of violence that shocked audiences at the time of its release. While you might be eager to know how the group of friends fell victim and how they faced the situation, so let us find out. The movie starts with a grave robber stealing many remains from a cemetery in Texas in the early hours of August 18, 1973. A local homeowner finds the gruesome exhibition that the robber created after tying a decomposing corpse and other body parts to a monument as the sun is rising. Five young people, Sally Hardesty, Jerry, Pam, Kirk, and Sally's disabled brother Franklin, drive around the neighborhood in a van. They make a pit stop at the cemetery to see the grandfather's grave of Sally and Franklin, which seems to be unaltered. Franklin tells the narrative of the Hardesty family's involvement with animal slaughter as the party passes a slaughterhouse. When they pick up a hitchhiker, he claims that his family has likewise engaged in animal butchery. The hitchhiker strikes Franklin and smears a bloody symbol on the side of the van as he is removed when the gang refuses to pay him for a picture. When the van runs out of patrol, the owner of the station where it stops claims that no fuel is available. Therefore, the group decides to explore a nearby abandoned house, owned by the Hardesty family. Meanwhile, Kirk and Pam decide to get intimate while leaving the others behind. They find another adjacent home that is using gas generators. Kirk walks inside the house in an effort to haggle for patrol, but Kirk is killed by a huge man who assaults him with a hammer while sporting a skin-covered mask. Soon Pan walks inside and discovers the living room littered with both human and animal bones. As Pan watches, the man snatches her, hangs her from a meat hook, and begins to cut apart Kirk's body with a gas-powered chainsaw. While all this was happening on the other side, Jerry seeks for Pam and Kirk in the evening. Looking for them, he enters the other home and finds Pam's nearly dead, trembling body in a chest freezer, and now was the turn for Jerry to be killed. Soon after the masked man finds Jerry, he was killed by the masked man using a hammer and became third in the list of victims. Sally and Franklin set out for the other residents at night. The story soon depicts Franklin's death too as he was cut down by the chainsaw during an ambush by the masked man. Now Sally is pursued by the man inside the house, where she discovers a very elderly man who appears to be dead and a woman's decaying corpse. Sally is chased back to the petrol station by the masked man, who then disappears. After briefly consoling Sally, the owner of the station beats and subdues her before putting her in his pickup truck. While he was driving to another residence, the hitchhiker showed up. He receives a reprimand from the owner for his behavior at the cemetery, who names the hitchhiker as the grave robber. The man with the mask reappears as they enter the house, this time dressed as a woman. The hitchhiker calls the masked man Leatherface, and the owner describes him and the masked man as brothers. The two brothers bring Grandpa down the stairs, who then cuts Sally's finger so that he can drink her blood. Sally immediately faints after her finger is cut. The following morning, Sally awakens. The men argue and tease her before deciding to smash her to death. Grandpa tries to participate in the activity, but his poor grasp causes him to drop the hammer frequently. The brothers chase Sally after she escapes and rushes into a road in front of the house. Meanwhile, the hitchhiker is fatally crushed by an approaching truck. With a heavy wrench, the truck driver hurts Leatherface before fleeing on foot. After putting so much effort, Sally finally waves down a passing pickup truck while she was totally covered in blood. She immediately gets into the bed and narrowly escapes Leatherface. Sally giggles hysterically as the vehicle pulls away and the light comes up. The morning was here after a horrible night, and Leatherface whacks his chainsaw in frustration. So this was how only one friend among the other five was able to save herself and make her way back home, but the rest became victims of the cannibals. Well, one of the most notable aspects of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is its gritty and realistic tone. Hooper uses a documentary-like style of filmmaking, employing handheld cameras, natural lighting, and minimalistic sets to create a sense of immediacy and authenticity. The film's low-budget and guerrilla-style production add to its raw and gritty aesthetic, making it feel like a found footage film before the subgenre even existed. The performances in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre are also noteworthy, particularly Marilyn Burns as the film's protagonist, Sally Hardesty. 
Burns delivers a powerful and raw performance, portraying Sally as a strong-willed survivor who is pushed to her limits in the face of extreme horror. Gunnar Hansen's portrayal of Leatherface is equally memorable, creating an iconic horror villain who is both terrifying and pitiable in his actions. The film's sound design is another standout element. The use of the chainsaw as a prominent sound motive creates a sense of dread and unease, and it has become one of the most recognizable and iconic sounds in horror movie history. The soundtrack, composed by Wayne Bell and Toe Cooper, is sparse and minimalist, heightening the tension and horror of the film's scenes. Also, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is known for its unrelenting violence and dreadfulness. While the film contains minimal explicit violence by today's standards, it was considered shocking and disturbing at the time of its release. Hooper uses practical effects and makeup to create gruesome and visceral imagery, including scenes of dismemberment, mutilation, and cannibalism. The film's violence is not gratuitous, but rather serves to create a sense of horror and discomfort, adding to the film's reputation as one of the most intense and brutal horror films of all time. Did you know that despite its controversial nature, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre was a critical and commercial success. It grossed over $30 million at the box office, becoming one of the highest-grossing independent films of its time. However, the film's graphic violence and controversial content also led to censorship and bans in several countries, including the United Kingdom, where it was banned for several years. In addition to its financial success, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre also received critical acclaim for its groundbreaking approach to horror filmmaking. It has been praised for its innovative direction, its realistic and intense performances, and its memorable characters. Many critics and filmmakers consider it to be one of the greatest horror films ever made, and it has been included in numerous best-of lists and retrospectives. Massacre has had such a lasting impact on the horror genre is its pioneering approach to horror filmmaking. Despite its controversial content and low budget, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre has had a lasting impact on the horror genre and turned out to be a classic cult. It has inspired countless imitations, homages, and references in films, TV shows, and other forms of media. Its influence can be seen in the slasher subgenre of horror, with its gritty and realistic portrayal of violence and its focus on human killers rather than supernatural creatures. The film's iconic villain, Leatherface, has become one of the most recognizable horror movie villains in history and the image of his mask, made from human flesh, has become an enduring symbol of horror cinema. Furthermore, the film can be interpreted as a critique of the American dream and the idealized image of rural America, as it portrays a group of young people being terrorized by a family of cannibals in the heartland of Texas. The film also touches on issues of capitalism, consumerism, and the dehumanizing effects of industrialization, as the killers are depicted as using human flesh for profit and personal gain. The film's dark and dreadly tone challenges traditional horror tropes, making it a thought-provoking and provocative viewing experience. Do not forget to tell us your views about the story, was it scary for you too? Do share your similar or any other horror experience in the comments section below.